we have two coils of radius R, same radius, having ca carrying a current I in the same direction, kept coaxially apart at a distance of root three by R. Our goal is to figure out what the magnetic field strength is going to be at this point P, at the center of coil two. How do we do this? Well, I remember there is a formula that we derived uh, for calculating the magnetic field due to a current carrying coil, we can just use that. Uh, we just have to be careful because there are two coils over here. So the way I'm thinking about it is since I want to calculate the magnetic field at this point, there will be two magnetic fields. One generated by this coil over here and second one generated by this coil over here. So before I start plugging in and using the formula, magnetic fields are vectors. So let's think about the direction of these two magnetic fields. Because if they're in the same direction, we'll add them up. If they're in the opposite direction, we'll subtract them. And how do we calculate the direction? We'll use our right hand thumb rule. So why don't you pause the video and think about what would be the direction of you know, the two magnetic fields at this point? Can you pause and try that? All right, so let's look at this one. The way I like to do this is you take my right hand use my encircling, the four fingers, to show the direction of the current. Here the current is coming out of the page, out of the screen, then going into the screen, that's how it is. So if I use my right hand thumb rule, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like this. So everywhere on the axis, everywhere, to the left of it, to the right of it, the magnetic field is gonna be to the right. So the thumb represents the magnetic field, right? So let's do that. So the magnetic field over here, due to this coil, which I'm gonna use yellow to represent, it's gonna be this way. Let me call it as B1, magnetic field due to the first coil. And what will be due to the second one? Well, the current direction is the same, so the, my right hand is gonna look exactly the same, and so again, the magnetic field will be in the same direction. So that's great, we just add them up. So the magnetic field due to this coil will also be in the same direction, so it's gonna be like this, so it'll be B2, and now we just have to figure out what these two are and we just add them up. So let's do that, let me get rid of that hand. All right, so what's the formula for the magnetic field? This is the monster formula, and I remember it, and I'll show you in a second how I remember it. But here it is, so the magnetic field on the axis of a circular coil, let's say B1, is given by the constant mu naught over four pi, two pi, n, i, r squared, divided by r squared, plus L squared whole to the power three over two. Where L is the distance from the center, N is the number of turns, I is the current, R is the radius. Now hold on a second. This is a, I used to always remember, I wonder how do I remember this monster formula? Well it turns out in physics if you remember some fundamental formulae, then you can derive the rest of them. That's the fun thing about it. So for magnetism, the fundamental formulae would be B O sub law, and Ampere circuital law. Now in the previous video we used B O sub R and derived the expression for, the, derived this expression. So if you have not seen this before, highly recommend you to pause and go back and watch that video. But if you wanna do a quick dirty derivation, here it is. I'm just gonna show you a quick snapshot of how I do this. Yeah, you may wanna pause over here and just look at this. But this is the basic B O sub R being used, mu naught by four pi I D L sine theta divided by R squared, where this is our R, sine 90, because the angle between D L and this is 90. And then that magnetic field is along this direction, because when you use your D L cross R, you get that. Then before you integrate, you take the actual component of it, because that's the only component that gets added up when you consider all the D Ls. And so when you consider the actual component, you add another cos theta, and cos theta from this triangle becomes R divided by this adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and then you add the addi additional cos theta, now this formula starts to become familiar. So now when you integrate, you get an integral of DL that gives you two pi R, and so if you now put two pi R over here, you'll get exactly this formula. So even if you forget this formula, you can, and if you remember what B U sub R is, you can, you can quickly derive this. So I'm just gonna keep that over here, you can pause and you know ponder upon this. If you've done that, now, we know what the magnetic field is, so can you plug in the values for B1 and B2 and, add, and then see what the total magnetic field is going to be? Can you pause and try doing that? Okay, let's do this, let's calculate. So B1 is going to be, if I simplify, I get mu naught by, the, you get two, and is just one turn. 
i is i, r is r, divide by r squared plus, what is L here? Well, L is this distance for the first coil. This is where we are calculating magnetic field. So this distance is root three r. If I square that, I get three r squared. Whole power three over two. So if I simplify, I get mu naught i r squared by two. This is four r squared. And uh, if I, uh, I have to take three over two, so I take the square root first. 4r squared square root is 2r, and then I take the cube, I get 8r cubed. All right, so this will give me mu naught i divide by 16, and r squared and r cancels, and I'll get r. So that's b1 for me. Let me just quickly separate this. Okay, now let's calculate b2. Same formula. But for B2, what's L? Well, since I'm calculating at the center for B2, L is zero. So it's gonna be mu naught by two, I R squared divided by R squared plus L squared, L is zero. <coughs> so it becomes RQ, you can just check that. And that gives me, I can just simplify it over here, so I just get B2 as mu naught i by 2r. And before I continue, I just do a sense check. So I'm seeing that B1 is one over 16, B2 is just one over two, so B2 is higher than B1, and that makes sense, because B2 is right at the center, and so B1's contribution is very small, and B2's contribution should be very close, so that makes sense. All right, so now the total magnetic field, the total magnetic field is going to be just add them up, we're gonna take the common things out, mu naught i by r is common. I get one over 16 and one over two, common denominator 16. So one plus two eights are 16. And so if I just, because there's not much space over here. All right, so there we go. Nine by 16 times mu naught i by r. There we go, that's the total magnetic field. Let's try one more problem. This time we have the two coils kept perpendicular to each other with their centers aligned. And our goal is to figure out the magnetic field at this common center, the total field. And they don't have the same currents this time. So a very a similar formula, a, little, a similar problem, a little bit different. So why don't you pause and give this one a shot. Okay, just like before, we first look at the direction of the magnetic field. Let's start with the yellow one. Use my right hand rule. It's gonna be this way. So let me draw that. The magnetic field over here, let's call it B1, is gonna be in this direction. This is my B1. And the magnetic field due to this one, well, it's flowing this way. So the magne magnetic field, if I use my right hand, is gonna be like this. So B2, due to the pink one, let me get rid of the hand. Pink one will look somewhat like this. This is B2, so this is the second coil, and this is my first coil. Okay, now since I'm calculating magnetic fields at the center, the L value would be zero for both of them. So I can just quickly go ahead and substitute and figure out what B1 and B2 are. So B1 is going to be mu naught over two, um, N is one I R squared divided by just R cubed. And uh, yeah, the current is I, so this is gonna be mu naught i by 2r. Okay, what's b2 going to be? Well, I can write this directly. See, b2 has everything, b2 is this one, sorry. Uh, this is the coil. b2 has everything the same, same radius, same uh, same radius, same, you know, L value is also zero. But the current is three times more, which means the magnetic field b2 would be three times more than this, right? Because I'll have three i over here. So it's just going to be mu naught into three i divided by two r, okay? And so now what the total magnetic field is going to be, well, the total field, this time, I, they're not in the same direction, so I have to use vectors. So how do I do that? So I calculate, how do I, how do, I do this? Well, I take, I take the parallelogram law this will be my total magnetic field, and I can use Pythagoras theorem for that. 
So my total magnetic field is going to be this squared plus this squared. So B1 squared plus B2 squared. Because there are a lot of numbers over here, what you know what I'll do? Um, I'm just gonna call B2 as three times B1, just to make my calculation simpler. So this is gonna be B1 squared plus B2 squared, which is three B1 the whole squared. And so the total magnetic field is going to be, hmm, let's see, I can take B1 common, and I will get root of one plus nine, that's root 10. So that's B1 times root 10, and there we go. So that's gonna be root 10 times mu naught i divided by two r. And what's the angle? What's the direction? Well, let's call this angle as theta. Then I can use tan theta. So let's do that. We go a little bit over here to make room. Okay, so tan theta is going to be the opposite side, which is B2 divided by the adjacent side, B1. And we know B2 is three B1, so that's three B1 by B1, even cancels out. So theta is going to be tan inverse of three. And I'm not gonna simplify this any further. I'm just gonna keep it as it is. So I know that the, let me just fit everything in the screen. So I know now that the total magnetic field is this much, and it makes an angle of tan inverse of three with respect to the horizontal, or with respect to the second coil. And there we go.